Hi everyone, it's Heidi from HB Paper Crafts here again for day seven of the 12 days of Christmas. Tonight I have this really sweet moose milk carton for you. Would hold a variety of things. I happen to have some couple bottles of nail polish and a nail file will fit in there nicely. Um, but you could fit like a K-cup, you could fit, um, you know, any other little gifts that you'd like in there. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start with a piece of DSP that measures eight by eight and a quarter. Now I am again using the Twal Tidings paper because I, I love it, but I switch it up and I'm gonna use this wilderness piece that I think goes nicely with the mousse. So when you're measuring your paper, the eight and a half is the, the landscape side and that's how you want to see, if you're using a pattern like this, that's how you want to see um, your image. So the eight and a half is gonna be along the top so that you make sure your paper is going the right way. And then the eight inch is this side. All right, so we're gonna start with this and we are going to get out my scoreboard here. Now we're gonna flip it and we're gonna do what I call the short side first. So this is the eight inch side. And we wanna make sure if we have a pattern paper that it matters, we wanna make sure the top is to the left. And that's where we're gonna start scoring. So on the short side, we're gonna score at half inch, at one and three quarters, and at six and one eighth. And then on the long side, we're going to score at one and seven eighths, three and three quarters, five and five eighths, and seven and a half. And there we go. Now, as always, when I'm making a box like this, I always make myself a little template. So here's my little template and what this is going to look like when I have it all cut out. So the first thing that we need to do is we're gonna cut away this section here. And the score lines are going to be very hard for you to see on the video, um, but this is where the first score line is and we do not need this piece. So we're gonna cut it right out, starting there. And then we're gonna cut up all of the score lines here, which are going to be the bottom of our box. Now also, as I've told you before, when I'm making boxes, I like to just notch them a little bit. That gives you a little bit of leeway when you're putting your box together and it's easier to make it square. But there is one tab that I'm gonna leave square and that's going to form the bottom of the box um, to give it that finished look. So I'm going to leave this second tab here alone and not do any notches in that piece. And then when, when we go to put it together, you'll see why. All right, so that's it for that. So now we're going to go ahead and we're just going to burnish all of the score lines. And just the bottom here, the tabs. Wow, I can't get hold of that one. There we go. Okay, so then to glue it together, we're going to glue along this whole tab here. Oh, my glue's got a little something something on the top there. So let's try again. Here we go. 
And then when you fold in the center, this should come over and it should meet and be square for you. And there we go. So then we'll go ahead and we'll put the bottom of the box together. We're going to fold in all the tabs and this one that I left square, I'm going to put the glue on that one. And I like the liquid glue when I'm making boxes because I know it's going to stay together. It's not going to pop apart on me. And if you're going to put something like nail polish or, or whatnot in it, um, it's going to make sure it stays together. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm just going to push it all down in there to make sure it stays. All right, so I'm gonna determine what is my front. So I have all my seams on the back of the box, and of course the flap is folded this way. So this is the finished edge. So that's what I'm gonna make the front of my box. And all I have to do to finish this off is just push your fingers in here and you're gonna pinch like so. And that's what's gonna give you the little milk carton top at the top. And I'm just going to finagle my score lines a little bit so these stay. And I'm going to wrestle with this one clearly. There we go. Like that. Because I want those score lines to stay out here. Alright, so there is that. Now to keep it closed, I have just these little binder clips, which you can get at any office supply. Um, because I didn't have our library clips. We have clips um, in the catalog, but I didn't have any. So I'm just going to use one of those. And I'm going to take a piece of our real red ribbon. And I'm just going to make a bow to stick on my binder clip. And I kind of liked leaving the tails a little bit long. So that's what I did here. And I'm going to adhere it to the binder clip with a glue dot. So we're going to open it up there. And we're going to take, actually I'm going to take a couple glue dots. And that's just going to go right on your binder clip like that. And that is what's going to hold the box closed. All right, so we have that piece all set. So now I'm going to take, I took a circle with the layering circles framelits, one of the bigger circles, and that's what I have for the base that's going under my mousse. And I have a scrap piece of the very vanilla. So I'm going to punch a piece of very vanilla with the starburst punch. And this is going to be the backdrop with the trees. So for the stamps, I'm using the Mary Moose stamp set. Now, unfortunately, we can no longer get the punch, but the stamp set, you could certainly still use the stamp set. It has some really cute trees. The moose has a raccoon and some great uh, Christmas sayings. You could fussy cut the moose if you still wanted this set, or you could certainly um, punch him out with a square or a circle. So I'm going to use Garden Green. And I use the bigger tree that's in this stamp set and I'm going to stamp it and then I'm going to stamp it again without re-inking. I'm going to do the same over here and I'm just going to sort of fill in the background so it looks like a little forest and it gives you a couple of different shades of the same color green. So I like the stamping off technique. So there is that. Now I'm going to take a scrap of the crumb cake and we're going to punch out 
our moose. We're going to stamp our moose and punch him out. And I'm actually going to stamp him in soft suede so that he stands out a little bit. He's so cute. And we'll take the punch and we'll punch him out. It's kind of a bummer that the punch is no longer available for this little guy because he is really cute. But that's how it goes with the holiday and the mini occasions catalogs. It's while supplies last, so anytime you have one of those catalogs and you really love something in it, you gotta make sure to jump on it. And the um, holiday catalog is only good until the beginning of January this year. So if you have the mini holiday catalog, you want to make sure you get whatever you're in love with out of there. All right, so I did ink him just around the edges just to give him a little more life. And I did the same to my trees. And while I have the ink out, I'm going to go ahead and stamp my Happiest of Holidays, which is also in the Moose set. And I'm going to use the classic label punch, which fits this Happiest of Holidays perfectly. And I'm going to go ahead and hit this with a little bit of ink as well. Alright, now all we have to do is just glue it all together. So, I'm going to glue my trees. to my real red and then I'm gonna actually go ahead and I'm gonna glue my trees right on to my little milk carton here and it, it does go off the edge a little bit so you want to make sure you're only gluing in the center of your circle because of course you don't want glue on your edges that runs off the edge of your box and I'm gonna make sure my tree is straight or semi straight Okay, so there's that. Now I'm going to take some dimensionals on the back of my mousse. And I will put him on top of my circle. Right there. Now this little guy, the happiest of holidays, I actually didn't glue it on. I just stuck it right under the little binder clip there. So it's just sort of hanging out at the top of the box. And to finish it off, I used these little sparkly gems. And the name of what they actually are escapes me, but it's part of this whole suite with this 12 tidings paper. They're in the holiday catalog. And I just stuck a couple going up the box. And I stuck one down below as well. Oop, that one's alive. There we go. So then they're going a little bit up the box and down the box as well. So there we have it. A cute little milk carton box. Perfect for a little gifty for anyone on your list. I appreciate you guys as always. I appreciate you tuning in and checking out these projects. I hope you would enjoy this one. Uh, have a great evening and happy stamping. Bye-bye.